everybody. Woo! Oh, yeah, no, you haven't even heard me yet. Don't, don't get ahead of yourselves. So we're going to jump right in because this is an incredibly boring topic. Uh, at least it is for me. And I don't, is anybody here an attorney? You might find it interesting. I mean, no, 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 but like, you might find it interesting, but I don't think anybody else does. So, but we're going to talk about GDPR. And how many people here are familiar with it at all? All right, cool, because when I've given this talk in the past, it was right when it got enacted, and people kind of knew what it was, but you know, really want to dent into, this is me, that's what I look like, that's where I work. Uh, the Twitter thing is just, it's a placeholder at this point, because they can't seem to get their white supremacy under control. Um, but I want to go back to something very important here. I want to point out what my title says, or more importantly, what it doesn't say. And I also want to point out the lack of letters after my last name. And those are important because while I'd like to think I'm fairly knowledgeable of what I'm talking about, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. If you have any questions regarding this topic that you need to implement for yourself, please talk to the appropriate legal counsel for you or your company. Now that we've done that, great. So really, first off, what the hell is GDPR? Because when this first came out, I thought it was just another four letter, three or four letter acronym that I didn't have to care about. Remember VAT? <laughs> but really, GDPR, that is a great government name for something that says absolutely nothing. But there's really one word that we care about, and that's data. This is, everything about this is about data, user data in particular, and that's why. Data is worth a lot of money to a lot of people. And in particular, we're going to talk about user information. We're going to talk about personally identifiable information. And the way the EU describes it, and we'll get into that a little bit later, is any information relating to an identified or identified natural person. OK? We'll get into that. But we need to get, like, where, why are we here? Where did we get here? How did we get here? So some of you may remember, some of you don't. But long time ago about 25 years ago, when the web as we know it started to begin and everyone started building websites, almost everybody had a focus on connecting people with other people. Because up until that point, if you wanted to talk to somebody that you knew in the past, you actually had to put forth effort. And you had to know where they lived, and you had to know their phone number and their mailing address. And you had to contact them in, in ways that were slow and hope they were home. And you, know, you didn't have to just search and click a button. But to do all that, they had to collect all this data. And they had to figure out, you know, everyone just started handing all this stuff over. And long story short, they, all these companies basically said, trust us with your data. <laughs> and we believe them. And that was a, I cannot emphasize how terrible of an idea that actually ended up being. Because none of us knew what we were doing with it. And I put myself in this group. So let's talk about the people that care about this stuff. So there's 92% of people and I have the numbers and links for all this stuff, but they care about their online privacy. Okay, who's the 8%? Like, I don't know anybody who would answer no to this question if they use technology at all. So, oh, great, that doesn't help us. This one's better. Only about 31% of people understand what we do and how that data is collected. They don't understand what that data even is. They might understand email addresses. They might understand pictures or, or address or credit card. But they don't understand cookies. They don't understand any of this other stuff. And this is a big one. About 3 quarters of people have limited their online activity because of privacy concerns. So if you're building websites and you're creating client sites, the idea is that people are going to come to them and do whatever it is you want them to do on your site. To do that, they have, you, they have to trust you and according to this, that might not be the case. And we're going to go into this because all these companies, we all know who these people are. Everyone's seen these companies, and they all have exactly one thing, probably more things, but one thing in common is that all of them have had large data breaches. So we have eBay had 145 million accounts hacked. We had Target with 110, JP Morgan Chase with 83 million, Uber with 57 million, and 600,000 drivers. Uh, you had Anthem, which is a health management, life, uh, health insurance company. That's 80 million. You had Equifax with 143 million. Remember that one? Uh, Yahoo with 3 billion people. And 
The thing is the numbers only say part of it because someone like Equifast, they had everything about us. So that's a lot of information that, you know, that gets out there. Nothing really happened to any of those companies, by the way. I don't, maybe they had to pay a fine. But so in, in steps the EU. Now the EU is always, and Europe in general, has always had a very different idea of privacy than we have. Um, there was an existing law in the books, and the name I didn't write down, and it's a lawyer thing, but they took an existing law and they started to build on top of it. The whole idea is that users have rights that you as a site owner cannot take away. And for some of us, that is an amazingly bizarre concept. Because it's like, it's my website, I control, no, not really. So the first one is the right to be informed. This one is what you probably notice visually on a lot of websites that you go to. Part of it was that cookie law, which is a terrible name, but you know, yes, I agree to this, yes, I know what I'm doing, you know, all those terms of service that you don't read and then agree to. Uh, the idea that you have to now explicitly tell people what you're collecting, what you're doing with it, who you plan on giving it to. If you're gonna give it to somebody later, you have to go back and tell that person, I'm gonna do something new with this information that I didn't ask you about last time, so on and so on. Also, and we'll get into this a little more later, if you have a data breach, you legally have to tell the people affected. They don't have to find out, you have to tell them. Now the second one is the right to data access. And this is some of the stuff that we might have probably touched more, at least on the development side. If I have data about you, you have a right to a copy of it. More or less on demand. I think the, there's a 30 day window maximum or something like that. But it has to be in a human readable format. And that word is kind of vague on purpose because depending on what the data is, is what would quantify it being readable. But you can't just give them this huge database dump. You can't just give them a whole bunch of numbers on a spreadsheet and say, figure it out. Like you have to give them what they ask for, all of it. You can't pick and choose. You can't be like, oh, well, this data, we want this one for back here, but you, you can look at this stuff. It's like, no, all of it is, you have to show them. And this is a big one. <clears throat> this is a right to be forgotten. So another little story is, I deleted my Facebook account in 2010 on their first privacy bug. Uh, we, we find out now that's a feature, but um, <laughs> the, so I didn't go to a college that had it, so I never really got into it, and, and so when the first thing happened, I was like, eh, whatever, I'll get rid of it. Like my parents live close by, so they already see my son. And so I didn't have one for years. And I made a fake account at one point so I could do testing with certain stuff when I was doing all the meta tags and all their open graph stuff. And then a little while later, this is probably 2015, maybe 2016, I needed an account that was me so I could use certain, I needed to log into stuff or I needed to be able to use it to access other data that I didn't want to make another user account for another service I might not ever touch again and all that other stuff. So I got to make the account and it will not let me use the email address that I'd use on that account that I deleted. And mind you, this is when Facebook actually said they deleted things. Now they don't even bother saying that, lying about it, but it wouldn't let me use my email address because it was already in their system from an account that I deleted at that point, say six years prior, still there. I had no idea. I had assumed that when I said, yes, delete this, they would agree to the thing that I just asked for. Apparently that was not the case. So long story short, the idea, the idea that something lives online forever is no longer true. You have the right to tell somebody, get rid of everything about me. Analytics data, comments, reviews, even to a degree, or you know, anything that more, you know, order history. Yeah, you need the data for your books, but you don't necessarily have to know who bought stuff anymore. Ongoing, ongoing. Basically, anything about me, and you have it, I have a right to a copy of it, I get a right to see it, and I get a right to make it go away. Now, some of that stuff ends up in court, but you know, the long story short is like, data isn't yours. It doesn't matter if it's in your database, it doesn't matter if it's in your cloud, it doesn't matter where it lives, it does not belong to you. At best, you're leasing it. And that's the thing, and this is actually a philosopher who's also a good friend of mine, but that's the thing, is it was never ours to begin with. We collected all this stuff, we never scrubbed it, we never verified it, we never validated it. We just started collecting it. I know for myself as a developer, I would just collect stuff, I'm like, yeah, this might be useful. Yeah, I didn't think about it, really. But 
we want to talk about why does this matter? Like, why should I care? And, and this is always one of my big questions is like, I have a limited mental bandwidth. Tell me why I care about the thing you're talking about. So who here knows who this guy is? Probably. All right, so this guy's name is James Liang. I probably mispronounced his last name. Uh, he, I'm sorry, he's sitting in prison. He is a developer. He worked for Volkswagen. He was one of the developers that built the systems that was cheating emissions testing for years. They got caught and it was, you know. He is not the lead developer. He is not the CEO or the CTO. He was not even the decision maker. According to the New York Times, he was, they made it a point to emphasize he was not the ringleader. He was, quote unquote, doing his job. And that job put him in jail. So the fact that we're just building what we're asked to be built isn't a valid excuse to be building what we do. So cool. Maybe, hopefully, possibly, I might have a little bit of attention. So what are we going to do about it? So like, how do we approach this? Why do we think about it? Because again, it's... It's a different way of thinking. It's something that we've never really approached. So the EU defines data differently than we do. In the US, we say any information relating to identify, you know, like very specific. It's like it's got to be, you can look at this one piece of data and know that it's me. So like my email address is my name. You can probably figure out that's me. Maybe some other stuff, but you know, very specific. Whereas the EU understands context and they understand data aggregation. So they say anything that pertains to me, which might in and of itself be something that you wouldn't even imagine is useful. But again, all this stuff getting rolled up. So when I look at these, it's like, all right, maybe political opinions or beliefs, some of that stuff might end up in maybe, I don't know, comment threads. But more or less, like I'm not collecting this data. I don't want to know this information about people, frankly. But now we get into some secondary stuff because they, again, they added on top of this. We're like genetic data. I don't have any of that. Um, I have my own, like 20, that 23 and me. There's genetic data. You know, biomed. A lot of people, especially corporate stuff, they have fingerprint readers. They have, you, you know, UB keys and all that stuff. Oh, location data. Well, I store that. Every time you log into the WordPress dashboard, it pulls an IP address, and that's why it shows you events in your area. Uh, pseudomized data. I probably got that, but it's pseudomized, I'm not sure. But the last one there, and that's the big one, online identifiers. Because, again, that's another word that doesn't mean anything. It's like, okay, why? What about online identifiers? Why do I care about this one? Because we're going to dig in. IP addresses, mobile device IDs, RFID tags, MAC addresses, cookies. Yeah. How many of these things are on the WordPress tables right now? I think all but RFID tags. And, we're, and again, this is just being collected when you log in. This isn't even being used by anybody. This is core WordPress. This isn't a plugin. This isn't Google Analytics. This is, this is just the stuff we hold on to. Email addresses, avatars. Again, all of this stuff gets pulled in, and we're holding information about other people. So yeah, this applies to everybody. This is the first big thing. People are like, oh, well, I don't have to care. You know, the, I'm not a big thing. It's, if you do business with the EU, anybody in the European Union. So a side note of that is, I get this question every time, can I avoid this by simply not selling to somebody who lives in the EU? Technically, maybe. Good luck figuring out where they live. We have route, you know, you have tour, you have VPNs, you have people that are on vacation, um, any number of things. If they live in the EU, you're abiding by that rule by selling to them. And then the other question I always get is, can I have people just agree not to do this? Kind of like, you know, when we're like, oh yeah, sure, I'm 18. Um, <laughs> no, you cannot ask somebody to willfully break the law in a place that they live. That is not a valid thing that they can do. So no, you can't really get around this. And furthermore, we'll probably see this in the United States soonish. Because for certain companies, it doesn't make any sense for them to segment their users. It doesn't make sense to build development stuff for one group of people but not somebody else. You have to build an export tool, you build an export tool. Period. Um, some other companies, you know, we'll get into more of it later, how they're applying it. But, uh, but yeah, it applies to everybody. They have gone out of their way to say, it doesn't matter how much, doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter any of that stuff. It matters to you. 
So the first part is being a data controller, because there's two main parts, and I am not going to go too, too deep into this because, you know, so basically data controllers is going to be, you decide what gets collected, you decide how it's used, you decide how it shares. The other one is going to be a processor, and that's basically everybody else. But they do analytics on it, they do, you know, jilt, glue, you know, follow-up, drip emails, all this other stuff. And you're trying to figure out which one you are, you're probably both. In some, in different arenas, you're going to be one, and others you're going to be another. You know, you're very well doing both of these things in some way, shape, or form. Now this is where everything boils down, is we need to start building things with privacy first, not added on after the fact. I've been as guilty of that as everybody else in that, oh, I've finished the thing I need to do, now let me make sure it's secure, now let me make sure it does this. No, no, the other way around. Now this is not just another nice cool word, this is actually a seven point design methodology, sorry, a development methodology, and this is actually required by the EU for what they call data intensive projects. Now again, I don't know what intensive means because depending on what you're doing is how much that is. You have to have this document, it's a living document, it has to outline who has access to data, what data is being collected. It has to be done before you start. So this is basically part of your scope now and part of your discovery. And furthermore, regulators can ask you for it. And you have to have it ready. So yeah, you need to know everything. If nothing else matters, if everything else I've said is boring, that's fine. But you need to know what data you are collecting. If you are developing a site, you are responsible for knowing what comes into that site. Now, yes, obviously people can install plugins and do stuff after the fact that you have nothing to do with, and that's understood. But as a site owner, especially, you have to care about this. You need to know what comes in, you need to know what goes out, you need to know what's being stored, where it's being stored, who can see it, what can be done with it, everything. And I mean everything. So this is the other thing that you have to legally have, and this is a privacy impact statement. And he's, this is the thing that needs to be documented. Everything else, basically you need to say what could possibly go wrong in terms of data collection and privacy. You need to say this might be bad, and outline what could be bad, and outline what you're gonna do about it, and everything from there. Now I can give an entire talk on this thing, and it would be even more boring than this one, so we're not going to. But again, the important thing is this is not done. There's this law, as they've written it, is still evolving. Because they understand that technology moves at a pace that law does not keep up with. So they've written the law in such a way that they can constantly add and modify pieces to match what the technology is now doing. So like they've now added in parts about voice data that they never had before because when they wrote this thing, voice search didn't exist yet. Who knows what the hell, you know, eyeball search could be a thing lately. I don't know. <laughs> None of it, you know, I wouldn't have bet half the things we have now were gonna be things, so I'm not gonna guess what it is, and neither are they. So you can't loophole out of it like, oh, well, it was this one other thing. No, they're still trying to collect everything in there. Now, some of you are probably like, well, yeah, they're not gonna enforce this stuff, because why? They make these laws and they go, they do it to punish Google, and that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they, they do enforce it. In January of this year, uh, France fined Google $57 million, which again, to Google's nothing, but it fined them $57 million for not, you know, for not complying, and that was not the max that they could have charged them. They could charge them more. They can charge you up to, I think, 4% of your gross, or like some number, like they can really, really hit you hard if they want to. And mind you, this is France, this is not the EU. So individual countries can all come after you for GDPR if they really want to, and if you're big enough to touch that stuff. But then you're like, all right, cool, I'm not Google, I'm not Facebook, I don't care. Well, the first company that got a fine, and this was in Germany, they got fined uh, 20,000 uh, pounds, which were, I mean, uh, euro, whatever that is in real money. And <clears throat> so this was a data breach that happened in the summer of 2018. They did everything right. They notified their users right away. They locked down all the data that came out. They had been, they had their impact statement. They did, they followed the letter of the law and they got fined because of a data breach. Because apparently whatever the data breach was was something that they possibly could have avoided or I don't know. Again, I don't, you know, there's whole companies that focus on this stuff. But the point being is they're gonna come and they don't care who you are. They don't care how much money you make or don't make. They don't care how many things you sell. That is irrelevant to them. The only thing they care about 
is user data. And the only thing they care about is keeping that protected. And this is the last thing. We, you cannot claim that you just don't know. There's no, there's no way to be working in technology and not be aware of all the issues surrounding security and privacy. It's literally impossible. Furthermore, many of these tools, and again, I could put myself in this thing, we built them, we had a hand in it. So we know how they work. I mean, we know more than most. We have to care. You know, again, that's, it's another thing on a list that I have to care about that I didn't have to care about before. That list keeps getting bigger and bigger. But this is one of the ones that I actually kind of agree with because I want my stuff secure. I want my stuff safe. I want to choose what information is made available to other people. I don't like the idea that Facebook knows more about me than I know about me, and I don't even use that service. If you ever want to get really creeped out, Google Facebook shadow profiles. That'll make you feel good. So first off, I want to say thank you, but then I want to get into questions because I usually get a lot of specific questions. Maybe I won't this time, but who's got any? Yes. I think I know what you're getting at. So yeah. the idea that we have to keep getting ongoing consent, that is, a, again, this is a totally different idea from the US to the EU. I like their idea better. How many, you know, like, because every single time Facebook changes something, I have to log back in and turn it off because I don't use it. Yeah, you are not allowed to opt in people automatically at all for any reason, any war. You cannot check a box for them, period. To what? That's the question. That you know, that says you cannot just say, "Here's a blanket terms of statement that I might change at any given point." And you're just blanket agreeing to. See, that's what you can't do anymore. That's you say, "I want your information for X, Y, and Z," and that's so. If you add A, B, and C, you have to go back and get their consent again. You cannot opt them into new choices based on what they signed previously. But let's say you go to my website. Today. Okay. Okay. It is so amazing. You can't speak to me probably tomorrow, maybe the next time. Okay. Have you changed your terms of service between today and tomorrow? No. Then you don't have to opt in again. See, the cookies thing is different because those get set every single time you go and load a browser. Okay. So that stuff needs to get consented every time because you're literally changing the data every time. Okay. And those cookies now theoretically contain different information based on what you've been searching and going site previously. But otherwise, yeah, you just can't, you can't opt in people for your stuff anymore. Now, I do want to be clear. None of this law says you can't collect it. You can still collect all the data you want, but you have to tell them you're doing it. You have to ask permission. Just like we, I tell my son, if you want something, you have to ask permission first, even if I've let you do it in the past. Same idea. You have to do the same thing. You have to keep asking permission. You don't have to ask them permission to do something they've already agreed to, but you cannot use that previous agreement to do something new, if that makes sense. So. So the idea being is like what, re and her question was, what are your responsibilities in terms of collecting data and knowing what you're doing with it? The biggest question you want to ask yourself is, first off, A, after you've figured out what data is coming into the site and what's being stored, because I'm guaranteeing there's stuff being stored that you don't know about. I learned that myself too. After you get past that is, do you need it after the fact? 
if you're running a little giveaway to, you know, you're collecting a name and an email address to give away, you know, saying give away a book. Once you've given away that book, now if you had them going onto a mailing list, they would have had to do all the consent stuff for a mailing list. But otherwise, delete that information. You don't need it anymore. Like holding on to all this data about people that you're not even using is a privacy issue waiting to happen that you could have avoided by simply deleting it. Like one point, there was an open source analytics port that I put on my own site. It was, used to be called Pickwick. I think they changed the name of it. I forgot. I set it up. I installed it. I promptly forgot about it. It was running for five years until I realized, because it had aired out, because I had finally discontinued the thing that I was using. And that's when I realized, like, oh, wow, I have all this data. So I just deleted it. I deleted the tracking script, and I deleted the entire self-posted platform. That data no longer existed. I now removed the privacy issue that could have happened, because now the data doesn't exist. So yes, there's the, you know, only keep what you need and make sure you need it. Like, validate why you need it. Do you need to add something to the sign-up form? I mean, if they're doing, yeah, I mean, most of the time there's some specific language that you'll see in a lot of the forms now. We'll even add that for you. But if you're only putting them in a bucket to pick one, and then you're deleting the bucket, I would, again, not legal advice, I would say you're fine. Now, if you're adding people to a mailing list, you're gonna try and market to them later, that's a whole different story, and that's something that, yeah, you would need to make sure that you have the ongoing consent. Any other questions? So I guess what I, I found a plugin that actually goes through and asks you all these questions, like, you know, are you using Google Analytics? Are you doing this, 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 this? Am I kind of okay, generally? Or do you have recommendations for so, me? So uh, her question was, she had used a plugin that had kind of gone like a walkthrough, like a wizard saying, you know, pointing out where she may or may not be vulnerable or what she has to do. That's a great start. Honestly, I did not know that existed. And I'll talk to you afterwards. I'd like to see that. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it later, you know, later on. But um, you're probably better off than most. I'd say that right off, right off the bat, you're probably better off than at least 80% because most people just have no idea. But after that, you know, you're, you know, you're running analytics. You're running all these things. You know, if you're aware of it, that's, you know, because, yeah, you can't control what Google does with the data. That is not your responsibility. Right. You have to make sure that people know you're giving it to Google. That's where your liability comes in for something like that. It's not that you have to tell Google what to do, because, yeah, I don't think I can pull that off either. But I have to tell people, hey, I'm letting Google know what's going on on my site. And again, most people don't care. Like, we're still waiting to find out if people actually care. Because there's a whole lot of things where like, yeah, I care until I actually have to do something about it. And then maybe my hand goes down a little bit more. So this could be something that only a few people care about. But governments care about it. And they have a lot of money. And they can make people pay. And that's really the only thing. It's like, I mean, I would not want to, you know, I don't like dealing with anything legal. This is another thing I'd rather not deal with for information that I could, you know, for things that I could very easily avoid. You know, just know what you're doing. Don't just throw scripts on a site because someone asked. Marketing asks for something, not to disparage marketing people, but make sure they validate why they want something, whoever they may be. Push back a little bit. Be like, why? Just, just say why. You know, if the, oh, we need it for the net promoter score. Like, I don't even know what that means, but yeah, okay. Um, but just make sure that they also understand this is the liability we're taking on as a company to have this information, is it really worth it? Because I think for, I can only speak for myself, but a lot of the data that I've collected and tried to figure out what to do with, it's just not good data. It's, you know, it's coming from every which way, it's not clean, it's not, yeah, I can't validate that it's actually accurate, so I end up throwing it away anyway. So it's like, yeah, figure out what you want, figure out what you're trying to, decide what you're trying to figure out, because then you know what to collect. Like, again, we always just grab stuff in the beginning and hope maybe we can piece it together when we're done. It's gotta be the other way around. You know, figure out what you need, ask for it, and then just make sure, you know, you have that, you know, now sites know, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Will people keep just clicking yes? Always. You give them a button that says yes, people will click yes. Doesn't matter what it says in the box. So, like, I don't know what I've told Apple I've agreed to. I have no idea. Hopefully it's nothing bad. But is there any other questions? Talk a little bit about, I mean, when the regulation first came out, there was a belief that there was going to be widespread, you have to go to a site, and you as a consumer would request to remove your information. We really haven't seen that come to fruition in some of the large, you know, it's sporadically happened. I'd be interested in your perspective on why we haven't seen more of that 
I think a big part of that problem is, and I'll use Facebook as an example because they're really easy to pick on. Um, they have, a, they have a whole set of data about me. There's a recent article, another recent article talking about it, where the, the designer from, Google, from Facebook rep, talked about it as like a voodoo doll. Every bit of information they get about you is adding into this little doll. So eventually they know what you're going to do. So they're not listening to you on the phone yet. You're just that predictable. And <clears throat> And it's creepy to think about it that way. The voodoo doll really kind of makes it a, an extra level of creepy. But um, I can't request that data to get deleted because I didn't give it to them. They got it from somebody else. So I think a lot of the, like the data that I want gone most, I have no access to. And the EU still hasn't figured out how, basically they still haven't figured out how to crack Facebook yet. They're working on it. But they don't know how to get the data about you back in your hands because you didn't give it to them. They collected it on their own using whatever means they used, which means maybe you gave them my information because you installed Facebook Messenger and it synced your contacts, so now you have, so now Facebook has my name, picture, address, and email, even though I never gave it to them. So now Facebook knows where I've lived probably in my entire life. They have every phone number I've ever had, every email address I've ever had, because somebody had it in their phone and turned on Facebook Messenger. So I think, I think what'll happen is once that data, once people realize they can do something with it. Because right now, it's like, yeah, I can go get all that information, but I can't, the, the only thing I do is I pull my Amazon stuff because I'm curious as to how much money I'm wasting. And, but otherwise, most of that information is just not relevant to me. I don't care, but some people do. But I think once that information and data actually has some relevance, people can do something with it, they'll start asking for it a lot more. Or if there's a big thing, news breach or, Somebody, you know, somebody uses information to find somebody that, you know, stalk somebody, which is a terrible thing. Now people are like, oh wait, what information exists on me? You know, like I think a lot of times people will start caring when it starts like hitting home, yeah. more to speak. Otherwise they're like, yeah, it's a problem, but I gotta take the bread out of the oven. So. Z's. Mm. <laughs> oh, but uh, thank you. I will take. Yeah, we'll take a look. One of the questions: like, How do you thread the needle when it comes to, excuse me, collecting uh, an email address? Let's say you have a lead magnet on your website, mm -hmm. and you're saying, okay, you know, it's a, it's a bargain. I'll give you this if you give me your email address. Uh, you know, and the assumption, of course, is that you know you're going to use that for ongoing marketing to that person. Mm -hmm. So. Probably what you're already, and his question was like, how do you handle taking incoming stuff to do ongoing like drip marketing and things like that? Probably what you're already doing. Because you're, like, if you're using anything like Constant Contact or MailChimp or any of those ones, they're putting in unsubscribe links. They're taking the information about, you know, if you unsubscribe, be like, why? Like, I never signed up for this. They, they see enough of those, they will shut down your account. Usually, yeah, I'm, by submitting this, I'm agreeing to your privacy policy, and there's a link to the privacy policy. Okay. That's, that should be sufficient. Okay. And, and again, it's like, if you're telling people what you're doing, I think the way that you tell them, as long as it's not opaque by design, is probably going to be fine. Like, there's not a lot of language about the particulars of how you need to present something to somebody. It's just that you have to do it. Because that, for us, that's the big hurdle. It's not what words to use. It's to even bother asking. Right. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> so, and I think it's the last one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, um, and there, she's asking um, a lot of websites you go, you have the con uh, consent to cookies. That was a law first, again, from the EU. That was the, what they called the cookie law, which was kind of a dumb name, but it was, that was where it started, and that's what they're already expanding on. That's why a lot of all the, word all the WordCamp sites that you go to have the same thing, because it's built into .com. Uh, yeah, you're basically saying that, yeah, a cookie's going to get set. It could be a login cookie. It could be whatever. You can set your browser to clear those every time you close it. You can have them delete every 30 days. Like that, again, you're going to see those everywhere. Um, but then you come. 
Um, there's probably yeah, there's probably plugins, there's probably stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if Core turns that into a feature. I know that they're just making sure that they build the structural stuff for privacy before they build the bells and whistles. Because I've been working on that stuff for Core as well. So like they've already they've been working on this stuff for a couple versions now, but I know that they're focusing on making sure they actually structurally build it right before they make it pretty or even visible. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's stuff about you know purging people out and, and everything else. So there's actually ways in there, but but otherwise, yeah. Again, you're gonna see start seeing a lot more of this stuff coming up, and it'll be like, oh yeah, I have to agree to one other thing. Just just pay attention to what you're clicking on. Yeah, actually, I think we have. A, cool. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can talk about talk about that afterwards. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I apologize. I um, his question was about the privacy by design. I apologize. I mixed the two. There's the impact statement. That's what's required. That is the document that has to say who has access, where the access is, where it lives, what you're going to do to mitigate these problems. That's the impact statement. I apologize. I got the two. The privacy by design is the methodology, and that's basically approaching something by privacy first, figuring out what you're going to do to protect users before you write a single line of code. Because otherwise, it's, a, it's an add-on at best. It probably won't work that well. So I think that's it. So thank you very much.